From an early age, we were taught to obey authority figures. We were taught to follow instructions given to us by our parents, teachers, elders, and religious leaders as a sign of respect for them and their status. As we grew older, we learned to present and position ourselves in ways that showed respect to our bosses, managers, and even team leaders. By doing so, we may have presumed that we would be rewarded for our respect and commitment. However, most of us have never taken the time to consider if our benevolent beliefs and behaviors could lead us astray and cause us to regret respecting those we were taught to respect. Welcome to Four C's One Family. We were taught, some even say programmed, to be contributing members of our society. Also, many of us yearned for confirmation from those we admire or hold in high regard, which often allowed their requests to cloud our ethical judgments. Because of our inexperience, naivety, and obedience, we weren't made aware that what we learned may not be factual or accepted by people with very different life experiences, especially outside our community or nation. We usually just followed along because it was the easiest thing to do. This way of perpetuated learning or indoctrination continued, and it never occurred to us to question why we believe what we believe or how we can check if what we were taught is indeed factual. When asked by those we respect to participate in activities or do things we knew deep in our hearts weren't logical, moral, or even legal, we frequently and maybe subconsciously forgot about our own personal goals, motives, and beliefs. All this while focusing on remaining cooperative and respectful, we repeatedly ignored or failed to activate the ethical sense within us that guides our morality. On several occasions, many of us may have privately disagreed with those around us and those we hold in high regard, or those who have some authority over us. However, regardless of our thoughts, we confirmed and conformed to their actions and beliefs over our own. This is when blind obedience prevented us from questioning or disobeying their request. Because of traditions, social pressures, religious beliefs, or organized rules, many of us are held back from confronting our leaders, superiors, or others we are supposed to respect. Also, many of us do and say things that confirm the beliefs of the group we want to remain a part of, even if, deep in our hearts, we disagree with its platform. Instead of confronting our fellow members, followers, believers, and leaders, we stand alone in fear. We camouflage our reactions to lighten the burden placed upon us by our lack of will to stand up and fight for what we truly believe. We often, without flinching, remain blindly obedient. Blind obedience refers to how individuals, usually in sizable groups and regardless of formal education, do or say things they are told or ordered to without fully understanding what they were told to do. Those who become aware of how their blind obedience may be putting them at risk begin to self-cultivate selective naivety which they feel allows them to ignore the problems of a request, which is much like selective amnesia. For example, dictators are usually financially fortified and influential individuals who use impressionable individuals to fulfill their deeds. A fear of failing to follow a request cements obedience in the population they control. Over time, followers become fanatical and blind obedience takes over them, which often causes them to do regrettable and inhumane things. The Holocaust is one event that echoes ripples of blind obedience. Under Adolf Hitler's dictatorship and authoritarian rule from 1933 to his suicide in 1945, he orchestrated the genocide of people he described as impure. 
He engraved in the minds of his followers and Nazi soldiers that they must kneel to his authority to purify the German race and nation of the people he identified as the cause of Germany's failures. Those who took part in the extermination of people whom Hitler proclaimed were their enemies became numb while taking the lives of individuals their leader ordered them to take. Snapshots of events in history show how blind obedience clouded the minds of people who, as a group or population, would generally be considered law-abiding citizens. Events that occurred under totalitarian rule show how blind obedience enabled leaders to elevate the level of hate that led to the enslavement, exile, or extermination of people in the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin, in China under Mao Zedong, in Cambodia under Pol Pot, and in Iran under Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, better known as the Shah of Iran, and from the actions and inactions of leaders of nations that today would consider themselves forebearers of human rights and democracy. The after effects of blind obedience worldwide caused the suffering of people with little power to fight back or protect themselves. Government laws and sanctions led to not only the genocide, but also the democide of people. The term democide refers to more than just the genocide of people which generally refers to when one group of people who have different social, political, or religious beliefs engage in actions to segregate, eradicate, or exterminate a group that has dissimilar beliefs. For a more in-depth understanding of democide, please refer to R.J. Rommel's book, Death by Government, to learn how the term reflects many events that have occurred and are currently taking place in the world today. Now, I cannot say how the horrific events that occurred under these and other charismatic leaders could have been avoided. However, I wonder what would have happened if individuals who carried out their leader's heavy-handed request had looked beyond their blind obedience to question their leaders to determine why specific actions had to be taken. I wonder if many of the horrific events could have been avoided or at least minimized. This is precisely when our disobedience may be warranted to protect the well-being of ourselves and those directly or indirectly affected or influenced by those who assume we won't question their request or call to action. Thank you for joining us here at Four Seas One Family. Please subscribe and download our podcast. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.